Hey, what's up guys, it's Jonathan here. So with Congress passing the $1.9 trillion stimulus plan, the next line of business for Congress is infrastructure. And with the infrastructure package, there's many industries that are going to be affected by the outcome of that package. And one industry that I think is being overlooked is civil engineering services firms. And one of the biggest firms in this industry is Jacobs Engineering. So in this video, I'm going to give a deep dive on Jacobs Engineering and if it's a good infrastructure play or not. So before we get started, this video took a lot of time to make. So if you could just hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, it will greatly help out the channel and get this video push to as many people as possible. So let's get right into the video. So when it comes to the engineering firms, basically the way they work is that usually there's a client, which most of the time is the government, but sometimes can be private entities as well. And they'll go out and hire a architect firm. And that architect firm will design whatever they need constructed, whether that's a bridge or a building or a roadway or whatever it may be. So once the architect has made the designs, it'll then go to engineering firm. And pretty much what the engineering firm will do is they'll make sure that whatever the architect designed is actually feasible. We'll also um, address the client's needs. So to have the work constructed, usually the um, either a construction management firm or engineering firm will go out and bid that work to a contractor and that contractor will then go out and do the and build whatever needs to be built and the construction will be managed by not only the contractor in-house but also by a party that's representing the client which is usually a construction management firm so sometimes you'll have firms that they only do architect work sometimes you'll have firms that will only do engineering work and sometimes you'll have firms that only do construction management work the nice thing with Jacobs is that they do all free. And that's true for most of the bigger companies in the space. And for Jacobs, that's no different. They do all free as well. So one thing that Jacobs do that's very different from a lot of these engineering firms is that they actually provide technology services as well as infrastructure services. So typically what will happen is let's say there was a roadway that was being designed and that roadway was supposed to track how many people drive on the roads. Usually what will happen is that the engineering firm will design the roadway and what pavements need to be used and things like that. And then a IT firm will come in and actually develop the systems to track vehicles and how many cars drive on the road and all those technology based things. One of the unique things that Jacobs does, they actually incorporate services like cybersecurity and data analysis and um, IT services as a whole as a part of their services that they offer to their clients. And you may be thinking to yourself, how does civil engineering and IT come together? Well, actually just recently, there's a water treatment plant in Florida that uses a um, computer to operate their treatment plant, like most modern treatment plants do nowadays. And what had happened is that basically a hacker got onto their system and an increased the amount of sodium hydroxide that you could put into the water. And to keep it simple, basically what sodium hydroxide um, does is that it removes metals from water. And it's fine in very small quantities, but if the quantities are increased too much, what can end up happening is it can make the water toxic for human consumption. These hackers were able to increase the amount of sodium hydroxide in the water by almost 100 times the normal amount. Luckily, it was caught by an employee working at the plant very quickly. So a lot of that toxic water was able to be um, removed from the system. But this is just one example that shows how Jacobs technology um, services can actually be very helpful to um, their infrastructure as well as we start to use technology more to manage our infrastructure. And by incorporating these two services into the same company, it allows them to deliver both of these services more efficiently which gives them a better chance of winning contracts and also allows them to keep their costs low since most of these services will be provided in-house and they don't have to be subbed out to another contractor. And this also is a win for clients as well because it saves them from having to issue two different contracts. And another thing about Jacobs too is that they um, like to do a lot of divestments and acquisition. And in the engineering services field, it's very common to see a lot of acquisitions and divestments. And one of the acquisitions that Jacob has made recently is that they bought another engineering firm called CH2M. And CH2M is very well known for their technical knowledge in the water 
in water and environmental engineering. And both the water and environmental sides of civil engineering lean heavily on technology to complete their tasks. Just like the um, example I gave you with water treatment, um, if in environmental, if you were to do um, groundwater extraction or if you're to treat groundwater, um, that is a system that requires a lot of technology and it requires a lot of remote um, monitoring and data um, collection and analysis to make sure that these systems are running effectively. And I think that acquisition makes a lot of sense given the fact that you want to provide technology services and infrastructure services as well. So looking at the numbers, Jacobs is not only the biggest company in this space, but they're also the most profitable. Their market cap is around $15 billion. And to put that into comparison, Apple, which is one of the biggest companies in the world, it has a market cap about 136 times this company, which mean, which shows you that this um, industry is a very small industry. Like I said earlier, Jacobs is also one of the more profitable companies in the space. The net profit in FY 2020 was about 15%, which in this industry, usually the net profit margin is about eight to 10%. So because of this, this company is very cash heavy, especially when you compare it to other companies in this industry. And with this cash, they've been able to do um, different things like stock buybacks. And in FY 2020, they're able to buy back about $340 million worth of stock. And they're also able to issue about $144 million worth of dividends in FY 2020 as well. So I did also take the time out to do um, a financial analysis of this company. And basically what I found is I assumed that the company was going to grow at about a 4% rate, which is what they grew um, between FY 2019 and FY 2020. Given their different services they provide their clients, I don't think a 4% growth rate is crazy for this company. And usually in this industry, the um, average PE ratio is about 30 because they do have some technology offerings as well. I decided to bump that up a little bit to a 35% PE ratio to account for that. And right now the stock trades for about $115. And from my analysis, I was able to determine that I believe that the stock in 2020 will be about $105 stock. So right now it is trading for a little bit of a premium. But I guess this all depends on how much you value the technology side of what they're doing. If you value it more at a 40% PE ratio, then that will bring you a little bit more to the pricing that to today's pricing. If you value it for more, then you'd actually see that this stock may be at a discount if you run your numbers that way. So I have a couple of concerns with this company. And the first one is that it, this company, kind of like this whole industry, is very dependent on economic factors. If there is any kind of economic downturn, and the government loses revenue, there may be a good chance that the government will pull back on some of these infrastructure projects. And if they pull back on an infrastructure project, this company would be very hard hit in that scenario. Another thing as well is that because this company is a um, company that works off of contracts, they usually all have a lot of short-term debt on the books. Given that we are at a time where we may start to see interest rates rise, that can negatively affect this company as well as they may have to pay higher interest rates for their short-term debt. Another concern um, that I have about this company is that they're very reliant on the, on the government. Every year for the past three years, about 30% of this company's revenue comes from the US federal government, which for this sector is very normal, given that most of the infrastructure projects that are going on are usually funded by the federal government. It is normal to see this high percentage dependence on the government. It is a a little concerning to me that so much of the revenue is tied just to one entity. Another concern I have about this company as well is that one of the biggest costs to an engineering firm is labor. And recently we've seen a shortage in, in, of engineers in all different sectors, whether it's computer engineers or civil engineers. And I think that because of the shortage of engineers, we may see salaries for these, for these skilled professionals rise. And because we'll see salaries for the skilled professionals rise, for Jacobs to be able to hire the talent that they need to execute these projects, they'll have to start paying more money for it. So this can hurt their margins in the long term. Also, another concern I have about this company is that they do a lot, that, they, that this company is constantly looking to make acquisitions. And acquisitions can be very cash intensive and it could require them to take out more debt. So, you do, it is something that you have to be, keep aware of 
if you are gonna invest in a company like this. For me personally, I like this business and I like the way they're going about it. I kind of like how they're focusing on tech, the technology as well as the infrastructure. I think it's a really good play and I don't see too many engineering firms making this this kind of um, transition. I think that this stock could see a significant bump if there was an infrastructure plan that was passed, especially if it um, requires a lot of infrastructure construction. Since I work as an environmental engineer myself and I'm in this industry, I actually do plan on buying some of their stock. And I think if we see any substantial declines in their stock price, I think I'll continue to add to it. I actually, I really believe in this company and I think that they do have some long, some really good long-term growth perspectives. In all honesty, I don't think if I wasn't in this field, I would buy this stock. And the reason why is because there's a lot of factors that affect this industry. And unless if you have really strong knowledge of this industry, it can be very hard to track kind of what affects it and what doesn't affect it. So if I was just a typical retail investor and I didn't work in these, this industry, I probably wouldn't touch the stock. I think that there's better options, especially if you are looking for infrastructure plays to put your money other than this company. And also if you were thinking about day trading or swing trading this company, I probably wouldn't do it just because of how small of a market cap it has. The trading volume on this company isn't as big as like a company like Apple. So you may find yourself holding the bag if you're not careful um, about your trades. I like thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It greatly helps out my channel and it helps push this video out to more people. Um, if you enjoy my perspectives or the way I explain things, please also share this video as well. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know if you plan on buying this stock or not. Follow me on all the social medias. I try to post it every day. And thank you for watching. Until next time.